Hi again, uh, here we are to continue uh, talking about um, JavaScript and the Giphy API and making a, our, our Giphy search page. Let's get the search um, feature working, right? So right now, um, our page kind of looks like this, right? And you know, we've just got a bunch of random images and they're just kind of thrown in there and that's okay. When we add a style sheet, we can arrange all these guys. So as long as we're getting results here, we're pretty good. Let's get this search thing working. I'm going to zoom in on this, right? So how is that going to work, right? Let's go into our code and check it out. So I've got a form here, and the form has an input and then a submit button. So if you click the submit button or hit return, it should submit the form, right? So this form um, will emit a submit event. So we gotta listen for that. We only have this one form on the page, so it's probably a good idea to use an ID on it. So let's call it like search form. That's, that's a pretty good ID name, right? Pretty descriptive. And then let's go down to our script tag here and figure out how we're gonna handle the, um, the search form, right? I'm gonna put this, actually let's do this. Let's um, put it above all of the code that we have so far. So this will go first. So let's say const um, search form equals a uh, document dot uh, get element by ID and our ID is called search dash form. And now let's add an event listener. So what we want to do is we want to say search form add event listener and the event that we're listening for is called a submit event. So we'll type submit here. And then again, um, the event listener takes a callback. So essentially this is a function. The second parameter is a function. So I type the whole syntax here. I always do it this way. If I type the full syntax, I don't miss the curly brace or the parentheses or something, right? So it's function, parens, and then curly braces. And this function always takes an event object describing the event that happened, right? So, you know, when you click the button at that moment, we'll generate this, this event right here, right? Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, and then I'll put a, re a line return here. Now, normally when you, um, uh, let me refresh it, right? If I click search, you can see that the page reloads. So all the images flash for a minute and they load up again, right? Um, and you can see the little blue bar going across. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to prevent the default behavior. So I'm gonna say e.preventDefault, and that's a method, so we put the parentheses on the end, right? And so now if I refresh here and I hit search, like nothing's happening, right? It's not reloading here. I don't see the little bar go across, right? So now here we gotta do all of our search stuff, okay? So before we do that though, we actually have to get this queue right here. And then I have a bunch of code down here that isn't in a function. It's not wrapped in any kind of like code block or anything. It's just a call to fetch. So that means like as soon as you load the page, all of the code here runs just immediately one time, okay? We need to be able to um, run this code when we wanna run it and be able to do it again and again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap all of that code that we wrote previously in a function. So I'll make a function here and I'll call it um, search. Yeah, how about search? That's pretty good, right? And then I'll make the curly brackets, right? So, you know, here's the beginning of my function. There's the end of my function. I'm gonna copy or actually I'm gonna cut all the stuff here everything down to the catch block, right? And then I'm gonna paste it inside of my search function. And um, then I'm gonna format it a little bit so it looks good. There we go, right? Okay, so here's my, my search function, right? And that works, uh, seems to work pretty good. The problem here though is now I need to get this query right here of, of Q into the search. So it can't just always be cats, right? That, it's kind of not good, right? Cats are good, but they're not that great, right? We don't want cats all the time, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass this value into the function. So I'll move it here as a parameter of search, and then we can just delete it right there. 
okay? So now we have to call search and include our query. And we'll do that up here in the search form. So in our search form, like after we prevent the default behavior, we'll call the search method and we'll need to include our query string, right? So where does this queue come from now, right? So now we need to get it. So we'll have to get it here from this input. Let's give this input an ID name. So I'll say, you know, ID equals, you know, we could use a class name. There's a lot of ways we can do this, but essentially, you know, um, if there's only one of something, an ID name is pretty good, right? So I'll put the ID name here and let's put this, um, let's call this uh, search, I don't know, search input. How about that, right? Um, and, uh, you know, we could get the the thing here. You know, we could get a reference to search input here. But actually, why don't I do it up here? And then that way, we'll just do it one time and have it stored in a variable and then just reuse that reference instead of having to have the document run get element by ID again and again every time you click the button, right? So let's call this like search uh, input. We'll follow a pattern. This is like kind of a nice pattern, right? We use the same name, but camel case from the ID, right? Um, makes it easy to remember um, what, uh, you know, what the names are. And so this would be search input, you know? Um, and then what we can do here is we can get our query And so I'll, I'll declare a variable const q, and then now that we, if we have this variable, we can just pass it to search, right? And now we'll get the value from the input, right? So the way that we do that is we say um, search input or whatever, you know, uh, form field that we want to talk to, and then you can say dot value, and that's like if it's got user input dot value will be that user input. So if this is a text field, then this will be the text that someone typed into the field, okay? And then we can pass it over here to our search function and let's give that a try. So uh, so that's looking pretty good and let's, uh, let's refresh here. So now it doesn't automatically search because we've wrapped all of this stuff in the search function and we haven't run the search function yet. But if I click search, it will run the function. Let's type in, um, how about flowers, right? And then I'll search, and then I get a bunch of flowers. What if I search for um, frogs? Uh, there I got a bunch of frogs, right? What if I search for uh, lamps, you know? I hit return that time, so it kind of worked, right? Hey, so that's looking pretty good. Um, there we go. So I think that that was pretty good. You know, one thing, like I said, that maybe it was a good idea to just do this code once. You know what? I just remembered that we actually did this uh, results element right here, right? And we got the name for it. So actually, we could take this code out so we don't have to run that every time we... Um, we run this, we, we load the JSON, right? So let's take that out here and move it up to the top. So now results element, we'll just define it once and then we can use it throughout the page, right? And then that should still work the same. Let's search for the sun, right? So that kind of worked out well. Okay, so um, thanks for watching. I hope that's interesting and then maybe we'll add some styles in the next video.